Imagine being on a plane cruising at an altitude of 35,000 feet when suddenly your flight turns into a nightmare. This is the chilling story of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961. The day started like any other, the sky was clear, the plane was set, and the passengers were ready for their journey. Little did they know that their flight would soon become one of the most notorious hijackings in aviation history. Three men, claiming to have a bomb, stormed the cockpit and took control of the aircraft. Their demands were simple but unattainable. They wanted to be taken to Australia. But there was a problem, a problem the hijackers refused to understand. The aircraft, a Boeing 767, didn't have enough fuel for such a long journey. Captain Loyal, an experienced pilot, tried fervently to explain this to the hijackers. He warned them time and time again that the fuel was running low, that the plane simply couldn't make it to Australia. But his pleas fell on deaf ears. The hijackers, driven by desperation and ignorance, continued to ignore his warnings. As the plane began to run out of fuel, Captain Lul found himself in an impossible situation. He was flying a plane that was quickly becoming a ticking time bomb, with hijackers who refused to listen to reason. With no other options left, he began to circle the area, hoping to land at the Comoros main airport. But even that was a risky maneuver, forcing him to land at a speed of more than 175 knots. As the plane began to run out of fuel, the Captain Lul had no choice but to prepare for a crash landing. The right engine flamed out. The captain seized a moment of opportunity. In the midst of a hijacked flight, as the right engine of the Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961 gave out, Captain Loyal found himself in a moment of chilling clarity. With the lead hijacker momentarily out of the cockpit, the captain seized the opportunity to make a desperate announcement over the aircraft's public address system. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot. We have run out of fuel. We are losing one engine at this time, and we are expecting a crash landing. That is all I have to say. We have already lost one engine and I ask all passengers to react to the hijackers, he stated, his voice echoing throughout the cabin. But his plea was cut short. Hearing the captain's announcement, the lead hijacker stormed back into the cockpit, knocking the microphone out of Loyal's hand. The hijacker's violent reaction marked a terrifying turning point, with the left engine flaming out soon after, forcing the Boeing 767 into a glide. The cockpit voice recorder captured the chilling exchange that followed. Loyal's desperate plea for the passenger's awareness of their situation clashed with the hijacker's cold insistence on increasing speed. The captain's voice was filled with a sense of duty and despair. For the sake of my responsibility, at least the passengers must know the condition, he said. The hijacker, however, was relentless. Descend it, increase the speed further, he demanded. But Loyal knew the futility. It doesn't have any difference, please. All the same, we are going to die. Why don't you, I thought there is no need to. For the passengers. His sentence was cut off abruptly. The captain's last sentence was abruptly cut off as the engines flamed out, leaving the plane to glide helplessly. The cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder both stopped recording at this point, marking the end of the captain's desperate announcement and the beginning of an impending disaster. With no engines, no fuel, and a fight in the cockpit, Captain Loyul was left with one option. He was forced to attempt an emergency landing at Prince Said Ibrahim International Airport on Grand Comore. However, a last-minute struggle with the hijackers caused him to lose his visual point of reference, leaving him unable to locate the airport. While still grappling with the hijackers, Captain Loyul made the decision to ditch the aircraft in shallow waters approximately 500 yards off La Galawa Beach Hotel, near Mitsamuli at the northern end of Grand Comore Island. In a desperate bid to soften the landing, Loyal attempted to align the aircraft parallel with the waves, as opposed to against them. The final moments in the air were tense. Seconds before making contact with the water, the aircraft tilted 10 degrees to the left. The left engine and wingtip were the first to strike the water. The engine acted as a scoop hitting a coral reef and rapidly decelerating that side of the aircraft. This sudden halt caused the Boeing 767 to tilt even further to the left. The rest of the aircraft then entered the water unevenly, causing the plane to break apart. The impact was catastrophic. 
Except for the rear section of the airframe, the fragmented pieces of the fuselage sank quickly into the depths. A tragic turn of events awaited those passengers who had inflated their life jackets prematurely. The buoyancy of their jackets trapped them inside the sinking plane, sealing their fate. The plane broke apart on impact and the wreckage sank rapidly, trapping many inside. The crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961 was a disaster of unimaginable proportions, made all the more tragic by the fact that the innocent passengers on board were caught in a situation beyond their control. Yet, amidst the chaos and the devastation, there were also stories of heroism and survival that emerged. Tales that we will delve into in the next scene. Amidst the chaos and devastation, help came from an unlikely source. As the shattered remnants of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961 disappeared beneath the waves, island residents and vacationing tourists quickly rallied, transforming a peaceful beach into a makeshift rescue site. Among those lending a helping hand were scuba divers who had been enjoying the clear waters of the Indian Ocean, now tasked with a mission far removed from their leisurely pursuits. Their training equipped them to navigate the submerged wreckage, aiding in the retrieval of survivors trapped within the sinking fuselage. Meanwhile, on the shore, a group of French and Indian doctors who had been vacationing on the island set their holiday plans aside. Their vacation turned into an impromptu triage center as they provided immediate medical aid to the survivors, their expertise proving invaluable in those critical first moments following the crash. In an eerie twist of fate, a tourist captured the entire horrifying event on video. Initially, she began recording because she mistook the low-flying, sputtering aircraft for part of an air show. Little did she know her footage would serve as a stark reminder of the terrifying ordeal and a testament to the unexpected bravery of ordinary people. As the sun set on that fateful day, the beach was a stark contrast to the tranquil paradise it had been just hours before. Yet, amidst the wreckage and despair, glimmers of hope shone through. Ordinary individuals had stepped up, demonstrating extraordinary courage and resilience in the face of unimaginable tragedy. Their swift action undoubtedly saved lives, turning what could have been a scene of unmitigated disaster into a testament to human compassion and resolve. As the world would soon learn, even in the aftermath of such a catastrophic event, the spirit of humanity could not be so easily broken. In the face of tragedy, humanity showed its resilience. Survivors were rushed to nearby hospitals, beginning a long journey of recovery. In the wake of the crash, the wounded found themselves in the care of the Mitsamiuli Hospital, a medical facility less than two kilometers from the site of the tragedy. The hospital's staff was tasked with the immense responsibility of providing immediate medical attention to the survivors, their efforts marking the beginning of a long and arduous recovery process. From Mitsamiuli, the survivors were transferred to El Maruf Regional Hospital Center in Moroni, the island's capital. Here, their conditions were stabilized and they received further medical care. Among the survivors were two French nationals and 19 injured passengers who were promptly transported to Reunion, an island east of Madagascar. However, even in the face of advanced medical care, one of the injured passengers succumbed to their injuries, taking the death toll of this heartbreaking event up to 125. The remaining survivors, once stable, were transported to Kenya and South Africa, where they could receive specialized treatment and be closer to their homes. Given the scale of the disaster and the international nature of the flight, repatriation became a significant part of the recovery process. The survivors were not only healing physically but also psychologically, and being in familiar surroundings undoubtedly aided this process. But the story doesn't end there. In a chilling testament to the scale of the tragedy, the lack of a mortuary in Moroni meant that cold rooms were used to store the bodies of the victims. 124 bodies, a stark reminder of the lives lost in the crash, were kept in these makeshift morgues until they could be returned to their grieving families. The crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 961 was a dark day in aviation history, but it's a story that needs to be told to remember the victims and to ensure such tragedies are prevented in the future.